good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are, my friends. My name's Alex, and I'm here to teach you about storage in GDevelop and usernames in Firebase. Let's get started. Join me over here on the canvas. So if you haven't watched the first video, you need to do that now, because otherwise this won't make any sense. But this is in popular demand, and I thought I'd get started on the series right away. So here we are. So the very first thing I want to do is actually go into our extensions and we're going to be installing the repeat every X seconds and the button sprites and states. Now I'll just delete these so you guys can see me re-add them because I accidentally did that on video. So we're going to do that now. We're going to go back into extensions. We're going to be looking for button and states and we're looking for button states and effect. We're going to add those in. And the next thing that we want to do is do uh, repeat and we're going to be installing this one here so I'll just reinstall it perfect okay hit close and now that we have them both here that's all we're going to need we're going to need to go over to our scene objects and add um a button panel sprite we're going to start with this cool yellow button nine patch so now that i have all of the scene objects i'm going to need for now uh, i can go ahead and just close that panel for a moment the next thing that we need to do actually is go to our layers panel and we need to create a new one. We're gonna call this UI. We're gonna go ahead and select the UI layer so that way our objects can be put on this. But before I get into adding and designing our, our username layout or being able to enter our username into our game, uh, we need to go to our global variables and we need to add a couple of things inside of GDevelop. Now, global variables, if you haven't seen my, my scope video, you should go check that out. It talks to you about how variables work and where you can access them in GDevelop and why we use them and, and where we use them and why, I guess, rather. So inside of our global variable, we're going to start out by checking uh, if we have a player username. So we can just type that in and set this to a text, remove the zero. and um, the next thing that I want to do is add a data field. So this is going to be a structure. Now, for those that don't know, structures are basically dictionaries or, or arrays that have uh, movable value types. Like you can move the position of an object by a title inside of, uh, inside of the, the layout. But this will actually allows us to manage data inside of GDevelop. For us to be able to save data, in GDevelop, we need to push it into a scene variable and then push it into a global variable so we can load and save that data. So for us to be able to make a local username, we need to use storage. And this is important because it also builds into our Firebase. So that's why we're starting here. So what we're going to do is now add a fetched data uh, structure. Now we're going to leave it blank because it doesn't need to be full of anything because we're actually going to be pushing data into it when we reload our, our game client in the future. And then also this will be used when anytime we pull data from the leaderboard. So fetch data, think of it as leaderboard or Firebase data being sent to us. So that's called fetched. Um, and so fetched data and a global username that our player will use throughout their, their client. So that's client-sided and it's accessible all the way through the platform in every level. Since the global variables are all sorted out, we need to now add our scene variables. We're gonna go into our scene variables and we're gonna add a variable first for, um, actually we only need to add one right now and that's the fetched username, okay? We're gonna set that to a text and clear it out. And so now, Although uh, the ha nothing has physically been put on our game scene, we're actually ready to get started finally saving, loading, and uh, adding things to our game scene. So now that all the variables are filled out, we can go back and open our objects panel. And now what we want to do is arrange our UI to be whatever we want it to be. So very quickly, I'm going to kind of show you how to do that. Um, if you are using the default, set up in GDevelop, make sure you go to your properties and in your game settings, and then go down here and turn this off. It'll start enabled if you're in the default. Turn that off, hit apply, and go to your grid 
inside of your grid, set it to 16 by 16. Defaultly, it's set to 32 by 32. And if you show the grid in 16 by 16 and you bring in your panel and you drag it all the way across, in 16 by 16, it perfectly fits within the realm of the default settings, but 32 by 32 will actually make it so that your um, the bottom of your sprite is hanging off and we don't want that. So that's the fix you should do. Now I'm gonna turn off the grid and just sort of show you what I might want to make this look like. I'm just gonna kind of rearrange this just a smidge. Now let's say that this was the UI interface that I wanted. Well, all we'd have to do is click on each of these objects and review their position and their current height and width. Now, I've already gone through previously before recording this video and set up a more user-like setup that I would want. Um, it, it looks pretty close to this, but you can take the time to set this up however you want before we continue on. Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to. Um, but while well, I'm gonna be using the actual variables, um, that I've previously written. So when I go over here now to the event scene, assuming that all of this is set up the right way, uh, that you like it, uh, there's actually one more thing that we're gonna need to do, and this is preemptive. I want to create a variable in here, and we're gonna call this profile. The profile is going to be our database structure that holds everything that's going into our database. So this will be our username. It could be a score, right? So let's do score. It could be a title. It could be all the data for your character. So here we're going to just set it up like this. One of them is a text and one of them is a number. Now I've already pre-established where I want all the locations to be outside of this video, um, but you can just follow along here and it'll go right into place. One thing that I don't know if I covered in the video or not, but make sure you add the finite state machine behavior to your enter button and then now that we have all of that set up, we can jump right into our project. And so I'm going to start off with a few event groups that I know we're going to need. I'm just gonna copy and paste those in. We're gonna need a button uh, states area. We're gonna want a loading profile area. And then we're going to want a saving profile. And so we actually need to start in the loading profile section. So we're gonna go on that and shift D to create a, a sub event. And then we need to check the beginning of the game scene. So at the beginning of the game scene, we wanna check whether or not a user has, um, has a profile. If you're new to saving and loading profiles in GDevelop, no worries, I've got you covered. So we're gonna talk about this right now. We're gonna start with the, the first condition that you need to know, which is checking if an object exists inside of a group. You don't really need to know much about this except for the element that we're gonna be checking is the storage name. And the storage name that we're using is profile. And the group we're using is the data field that we're saving. And so this will be the username field uh, of that local save. So we gotta think like a computer when we're designing and we need to tell what like tell the computer from the top down what to think about. So the first thing we do when we load in is see whether or not we do or don't have a user profile. So if you click on this this top one that I have, you know right now there's duplicates, right? Press J, it'll invert itself. Or you can come in here and click invert. Now this says if the if the profile doesn't exist, which is which makes sense when we first start a development, there aren't any profiles yet. We haven't even got there. So this is where it starts with the, at the beginning of the scene, if a profile doesn't exist, what happens? Well, let's start, let's start on that. Now I told you before that um, I've already saved the location of the buttons that I wanted. And the reason is, is because in GDevelop, if I was to hide the, um, the elements, anything that's on the scene, it can still be interacted with unless I build other methods to block it. So the best way to actually use this in GDevelop is to only create what you need when you need it and remove it when you don't. And because it at the beginning of the scene is a trigger once, we don't need to add a trigger once here. We can simply start 
our project. And so before we can change a position of an object, it must first exist inside of gdevelop as something that is an instance, meaning it's been created. So we're gonna actually create our, our uh, username input at a specific location. This specific location is 109 by 256. And I wanna put that on the UI layer. Now I'm gonna copy this three times because I need to upload um, the other objects. So we have the enter button and we have the username error catch. Now each of these have their own location. So this one will be 681 by, I believe it's 252. And then we're going to also set the position of the um, username catch. And actually what I wanna do here is set the position to screen width, not height, width, divided by two, which means in the center of the screen. And we're gonna set the position of this to 433, so it's kind of lower in the screen, right, on the lower bottom. And now that we've created everything, we need to change its size. So then if I hit preview, we'll see that, well, things are technically in the center, it's where it should be, everything is too small, and or leaning off the edge. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to rearrange where we put everything, right? So the best way to do that is just to go in here, click on the object you want and change the size of it. And in this particular case, the username, we're gonna change it to um, 512 by 96. We'll come in here and do 96. And we'll also change the size of the user button or the enter button to be 448 by 96 as well. And now if I hit preview, we can now see that everything's kind of lined up right. Now the error message is really long and that's okay because um, later on we'll be moving its position, but right now we're gonna hide that error. So it shouldn't exist obviously at the very beginning. We don't wanna see an error when we first start creating our profile. So that is the, if the user profile doesn't exist, that's all of the script. If it doesn't exist, allow the player to create a new username. And then what we wanna do is then check if it exists. And if it does exist, we can load it from the storage. So we're gonna do load. And we need, this is really important. We need to load a text value, not a, a value, load a text. And the text that we wanna load is uh, out of the storage name. And the storage name is profile. The group is username, right? We're digging into our local save to pull that data. And the variable that we want to load is the fetched username. We're gonna load it into that variable, okay? So we're gonna load the username from the profile and set it inside of this temporary value. And then we're going to go into our global value and we're gonna look for our global username. So it's just player username. And we're going to set it equal to the fetched username. So here we go. If it exists, load it in and then change the global variable to our fetched username. And now we can actually see, like if I hit preview, uh, it doesn't matter what I type here or what I enter. There's no logic yet for actually submitting those things. So that's where button states come into play. So now what we need to do is check if our enter button is clicked. If our enter button is clicked, we're going to trigger it once as this is a one-time sort of event. If we trigger it, what do we want it to do? Well, we wanna save that information. So now we can go save, and we're looking for saving a text va value. Of course, the storage name is profile. We're gonna save profile. We're gonna save specifically inside of profile a, a section called username. And the text that we're looking for is the text that we're putting into our username input field. And that's username input text not value, you actually wanna delete and wrap it like this. And that's because we're saving a text and not a value. Go ahead and hit okay. So now we should be seeing this save into our, um, our database. But now we also, after we press that button, there's some values that we need to push because the, the player isn't just gonna close the game right here, right? Right after this, we need a couple more features inside of the, uh, or declarations. 
and we need to declare uh, a variable change for the player username. The player username itself needs to also get transformed into this input. So we can change the player username and we're going to set it to that text value. The other thing we're going to do because of the way I'm building the structure, we don't have more than one game scene. I'm going to use that other variable that we just created, the local or the, in this case, the um, scene variable of profile. And we're going to be looking for profile username. And we're also going to set that to the input text at the same time. And then when we're done with that, we also want to delete the buttons that we created. So delete the enter button and paste this again, delete the user input button, and we're deleting the user uh, error catch because it's only used inside of uh, when we're creating a profile. And now lastly is saving mode. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can go about saving, but because I'm doing this all in one project and we're gonna be building up to a full feature of what we're doing inside of uh, Firebase, we're gonna add a condition that checks whether or not we're in the previewer. So we're gonna go here and type preview. We're going to uh, enter in. And now when a key is pressed, so key, oops, key, key is pressed, we're gonna use the S key. And now we get to do our very first write to the database, and that's write. Ah. We're gonna be writing a document to the Firestore. The collection is what is the database name, right? So the collection is leaderboard, because that's what we named it when we created the leaderboard inside of um, uh, Firebase. The document is the player username. And we're gonna be writing that information through the profile. So we're gonna write the profile into, so this is the data that gets sent to the Firebase. It's coming through a global variable of player username. That's like the tag we're adding into. What's the document that we're sending? Player username. We're sending that document, but we're using that to write the uh, score and everything into the uh, Firebase. So if everything went right, we can now hit preview. We can type in my name, I am Alex. We're gonna hit enter and hit S to save. If everything went well, we can go into our debugger and check our game preview. We can then refresh that and check our global variable. The global variable is I am Alex. And if I go to the scene variable, we can see here that profile is now set to the structure profile also has I am Alex, but the fetch username is zero and that's because we haven't started and stopped our game yet so so once that's done we can preview again and we'll see that nothing is here which which indicates that our fetched username is working and our username is now back set globally so that worked wonderfully if at any point in here something happens and you can't adjust or re-enter the username state because now it's it's done right we can't there's nothing we can do what we need to do is actually create one more event group we're going to go to the very top this does need to come before everything else and we're going to call this clearing local database so when we clear the local database this is another at the beginning of the game scene event this is a one-time trigger when this is enabled we're going to delete and the thing that we're looking for is a storage element the storage again is profile and the user group is username. And so what we're saying here is that when this is on, going to close this down one more time, and I'm gonna say, Alex, I am, like Sam, I am, right? Hit enter, hit S, go to our leaderboard, Alex, I am, Alex, I am. So there you have it, folks. You've now saved your first entry into your project. Hopefully you found this helpful and you learned something new. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to set up rules for entering names and making sure that there aren't competing profiles for user scores. And then in the video after that, uh, in part four, we'll be covering how to make a score and how to tie it all together. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by and remember, happy game making and I'll see you in the next video.